I'm going to turn that down. I don't want to have any feedback. Nope, 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 nope. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is our uh, little uh, Monday show that we do. Uh, let me get some volume here on myself and let me get ready to get some volume on callers who call the program. Let me see here how many people are waiting. Oh, wow. We already have uh, uh, quite a few people waiting. We got Andrew Deutsch and uh, let me see here. There's Marjorie. And hey. Bender and there's Rick Sheckman. Oh, and wait a minute. Here comes Jeff Stein. Let me, um, let me admit oh. him. Okay, there we go. I got a, got a whole gang of people here. And let me make sure this is going out there as well. Um, yeah, it should be just fine, right? Yeah, yeah, there we are. Okay, hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, Ben. Now, I, uh, Shecky always says to me, I don't know, I says, I call, but I never have anything to say. And then he talks a lot during the show. So. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything today. Huh? I'm not going to say anything. You're not going to say today. anything today? No, you're. You it, just did. You have. Oh. You, you, <laughs> you, you, yeah, very good, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Hi, how, how's your, how's everybody's week going good so far? Oh, only considering it's only Monday. Yeah, it's Monday. It's yeah. only Monday. Giuliani's sick, so things are okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has a minor case. Minor case. How many of us were disappointed by that? I know. You know. Uh, I love that um, Mark Marin tweeted that his new favorite Ramon song is uh, Rudy Got the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. He, he's having a rootin' tootin' time. I heard it on the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I wish I could sit here and go, okay, well, Rudy's got the COVID, you know. <laughs> but uh, I don't you know. You don't wish anyone to be ill. God, okay. no, he, he's had a bad enough week as it is. I mean, farting on national television. Farting and, and then the drops of, of dye going down his Well, face. that was last week's misery. Face melt. <laughs> and the week before that, it was Borat. Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah, the landscaping business, the, the holiday, the Milton or whatever. Another good one. Another yeah. good one. Another I, I, just, I had just put on Facebook, it can't get any worse for Judy. For Bio. Julie, R Judy, yeah. right when, right, Rudy, sorry, right I mean, when, when, he, uh, right when he farted, <laughs> right when he farted, I said, it can't get any worse. And then the next morning, I, uh, well, well, I'm back at the Ritz, the four season. How, how, how many by a show of hands feel sorry for Rudy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't but wish anyone the, harm, but there's some that. Mayor ever, according to Mr. Trump. Yeah. What are you going to say? Andrew? He only blew up a building. Yeah. I don't wish anyone harm, but there's people who get themselves in trouble I'm not that concerned about. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't wish it on him, but he's got it, and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to be concerned. Have he ever, like, denied the existence of COVID or minimized it? I don't know. He's certainly he... not. He, you know, he goes around not wearing a mask and hugging people. Yeah. Yeah. I wish Trump harm. I, w I wish them all harm. I'll say it. I don't, <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> Give me the button. I'll push it. Get them rid of it. Don't, I don't wish it, but I won't be upset if it happens. Well, exactly. I mean, there's a kind I of, you, you kind of wish Trump would die. Yes. <laughs> I'm not saying we, we're going to kill him. We're, I'm just saying we wish he would die just to shut him up. <laughs> yes. You know. I mean, I'm okay. petulant, sore loser. And, and I have a funny feeling if he died tomorrow, some way he would find some way beyond the grave to keep <laughs> tweeting. And, and he'll blame Obama. I mean, well, it's nonstop. He doesn't stop. Supposedly, there's a crew doing some reno down at Mar Lago, and she's out shopping schools so yeah. that uh, he can begin in January. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you see um, the wife finished? The tennis court. Tennis courts. <laughs> wife. The wife finished what tennis court? At the White House, the new tennis courts they just posted today. They put oh, tennis oh, courts really? in the White House? Yeah. Does I Biden they play did tennis? They, they did it where Michelle <laughs> had her garden. They pulled out her garden, her vegetable garden. The rose garden or something. Or whatever. No, yeah. He put in the rose garden, pulling out Michelle's uh, vegetable garden. Vegetable garden. Now, first they pulled out the vegetable garden, then they destroyed all the first wives' rose bushes to change the rose garden. 
Really? Why was it? There were there were many many first ladies who had personal rose bushes. They tore them all out right. and uh, put in new rose bushes. Uh, why would they make tennis courts with five weeks to go? And I can't imagine Donald's a big tennis player. He'd have a heart attack in the second. Yeah. And he still has five weeks to go. That's the, of the problem. Tennis, you know the the room, um, whatever you call it, the pavilion. You know, she designed this palatial pavilion. Co correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, and, and since I'm not a big sports guy, maybe you can correct me on this. But uh, the only sport that Trump plays is it's golf. Is golf, golf. Which leads me to believe that it's not particularly a strenuous pursuit. And he he no. doesn't walk. He's got a golf. Well, if you walk the. If you walk the course, could be. If you carry yeah. your walk the course, you get some exercise. But you know, yeah. according carry according to that book, could be. according to that book, he he has the fastest golf cart you can buy, so he can get to the hole and and screw with his component opponent's ball. He's been known to take it out of the sand and put it on the turf. Right. Right. <laughs> no, but he'll also. There's a story in the book where some guy got the best ball of his entire life, and Trump rushed ahead to knock it off the green. So he couldn't beat him in the in the game. The last Cheat. person that I remember cheating at golf that way was Auric Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> Where the you know the guy had the golf ball in his pocket yeah. and then he dropped it through his pants. <laughs> That's something uh, yeah. Trump would do. Yeah. And then he killed Joe Masterson right after that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> By painting her gold. Yeah, but you can kill somebody by painting them gold. Well, yes. Yeah, if you don't leave a small place for the skin to breathe at the base exactly. of the spine, I learned that from Goldfinger. 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 <laughs> yeah. hmm. Such useful information we get on this show. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> uh, our our Doctor Doom is here, uh, Charlie Wallace. I call him Doctor <laughs> Doom because he. Uh, he always tells us how bad things are in the country and specifically in Texas, in Texas where Scott also lives, by the way. Uh, and and uh, what is the current count and the amount, Charlie Wallace? Well, the current count is about uh, 14 million seven hundred thousand cases and 282,000 deaths. We're going to reach 300 in about a week. Yeah. We can do that in a day if we really work hard. We can yeah. do it in a day. Such an achievement. That's yeah. like a Jerry Lewis telethon. I went out yesterday <laughs> to go buy chocolates at the pharmacy, at the drugstore. Uh, that's the most I've been out in a week. I, I'm afraid to go out there. You know? I mean, and we're one of the safest states in the country, right, Checky? We got I believe it. so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're but, fourth for no, Hawaii, wild. Vermont, and and Maine. Yeah. I think those are the three. But our our governor, our bad. governor is saying that yeah. the early people to get the he he's going to try and equitably pass out the vaccine, and that because blacks disproportionately are uh, dying at twice the rate that whites do. Yeah, but that's from guns. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, in New York City, that well may be true. But anyway, um, here comes Music Bill. Now, did we have Music Bill on last week? No. I think he tried to get on. Yeah, yeah he tried to get on. Music Couldn't Bill, uh, can you hear us now? Well, he's trying it's to connect just... his audio. Connecting to audio. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they did this poll, but they said on the news okay. that 40% of African Americans say they won't take the vaccine. Yeah. Oh, there's no pop-up show on Facebook. Oh, damn it. Yes, it is. That's how I got here. That's how I got there. That's how I got here. Well, but, but they have to, when they get to Zoom, they have to You know what it is? I've got, I've got to change something here. Hold on. Let's see if I They can. just have to click on what you put on Facebook and they get over here. <clears throat> and then launch Wait program. A Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, bu -bu 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 okay, I can change it here. I can do it here, public. Okay, now we're, we're live now. Uh, okay, we should be okay. You should be able to get it now. Please. You had to make it pubic? Is that what you said? <laughs> you have to make it pubic. 
Right. And they, no. they missed all that solid gold there's, material. There's, already. there's a thing that I forget to click every week that says make it public and it's, it says only me. So now you should be able to be getting us okay. Uh, let me see here. Um, anybody, anybody, just write me and tell me, are we, are, are we coming through now? How, how about now, Oscar Levant? Oscar. He names himself Oscar Levant. <laughs> oh, okay. Question mark. Um, no. Let's see here. Is it okay? Uh, let me see. Here. Yeah. Yeah, it's on. It's it's on. Okay. On your Facebook, yeah. One yeah. one viewer. I guess that's me. One viewer. One viewer. Yeah, now they're two. Oh, two. Oh, we doubled. We doubled okay. in like 10 seconds. See? I'm sorry. It works. All the people who didn't get it earlier, I'm sorry. I apologize. There is something that I have to click here that's very small, and I don't pay attention to it because usually it should just automatically go to that. But now I've fixed it for you, and uh, we should be okay. All right. Okay. All right. It's public. Yes, it is public. Okay. So um, where are we? Uh, anyway, if, Ru if Rudy's is he having to quarantine now because it's got no, these cases. Hospital. Hospital. Wait a minute. Oh wow! One second. Music, Bill. Are you there? Can you hear us? Okay, I'm going to remove you from this group. Hi, Bill. Oh wait, wait something minute. happened. Wait a minute, something. <laughs> Cancel. Wait a minute, Music, Bill. Are you there? He's 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 in the tall grass. <laughs> <laughs> Send the dogs. Wait a minute. It says he's trying to send something it looks like. Trying to connect to audio. Oh, trying to connect to audio? Yeah, it's connecting to oh, audio. So I'm not going to put up with this insanity. Okay. <laughs> Remove him. There we go. Bye, Bill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. So for those I already kind of miss him. For, for those people who didn't miss the first 10 minutes of the program, do we all want to repeat what we said? No, 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 I don't think so. You can watch the rerun on this, which will be on right after we're through here. Okay. But I, as I say, I certainly understand, you know, the African American community not wanting to be guinea pigs because they've been guinea pigs for drugs and testing in the past. No, no, no. But let me, let me, let me. Take... But to have forty percent say they wouldn't take the vaccine when they're at most risk. Seems... Let me, let me tell you, Mike Ripe. Okay, is that our governor says that he's going to give them the the vaccines first because. He, he, they die in a disproportionate amount. No, he uh, said he's going into those communities. No, no, but he said those communities are going to be uh, like it's first it's the healthcare workers and then it's the seniors in uh, homes and then it's going to be blacks and Latinos. Okay, because blacks are disproportionate by twice and Latinos by one and a half. Okay, here's my gripe. <laughs> I go through this neighborhood and I see those very blacks not and they're them. not wearing masks. Yep. Yep. That's why they're dying at a disproportionate rate among other things. I mean, there are disparities in health systems and so on and so forth, but a good reason is they're not wearing masks. And how, how do you regulate something like that? Anyhow, you've got a line of people. Are you going to check this? Well, I'm sorry. You, you, you almost are black enough, but you've got light skin. And I mean, it, it, there's no way of doing that without coming across as a total jackass. I mean, I understand the sociological reasons why they don't get health care like everybody else gets. I understand that. OK, but if they were wearing masks, I'd say, OK, but if you're not wearing masks and you're saying black lives matter, you apparently don't believe that black lives matter because you're perhaps spreading covid to your other black friends. Am I? Is this racist? What I'm saying here? No, no. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think so. Charlie, but, how do you feel about that? Why would well, you ask him? You, you can't. You can't say Black Lives Matter and then ignore all the COVID protocols. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and they seem to enjoy getting 200 people together at some bar in Queens and singing yeah. and dancing. Well, white, that, white people that do Staten Island, Staten Island. That, well, no, those are that, that's a white person thing, too. So this young Republican Party. Yes, that New, New York, They moved it to New Jersey, and they're posting pictures together <laughs> with saying, F you, Antifa. No one wearing masks. 
you know, no, again, Trump's it's, rally. It's, if you looked at Trump's rally the other night, even the people behind him weren't right. wearing even this. Even the people behind them. That was yeah. packed. No yeah. difference at all. I, I you know, I put the Trump people to the front of the line then because they're getting it because they're not wearing masks and as I they put keep them at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. I'd have no trouble with, uh, I'd have no trouble with uh, uh, where, you know, taking the vaccine. Absolutely. I don't either. Well, uh, I don't. Yeah, Fauci says it's okay. I'll take it. Well, to yeah. him, <laughs> with the vaccine is they're not shooting you up with COVID. It's not what they're doing. They're shooting you up with some kind of uh, hybrid thing that has nothing to do with the actual virus. It has to do with attaching itself to the virus and negating it or something like that. Yeah. But it's yeah. not something which is going to give you the virus. Now, you know, I think if, if they had come out with the vaccine and it was just the government telling me the vaccine, you know, Trump and his cohorts well, and I cronies, it, was, no. I wouldn't have taken it for anything. But the fact that, that actual people, and the one I want is the Pfizer one because Trump had nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, I mean, there was no money. I, they they did it because it was what they were supposed to do. Well, I read online, and I guess I because I've seen it online, it's got to be true. Of and course. The problem with the virus, with the vaccine, is they've put a microchip in there that they can <laughs> then track you. Well, if you get lost, that you don't end up at the pound. They take you back to your owner. Yeah. You know, they, you know, they've already done that, right? We've got our phones, so yeah, yeah, yeah. They can follow us anyway. I'm, I'm having my, my tinfoil hat retin. <laughs> Can you believe, though, that people say that? You it's know. like the people with 5G is for brain control, mind control. <laughs> oh, is it really? Oh. And it causes cancer like the windmills. Oh, okay. <laughs> you need to have a mind before it can be controlled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So earlier, I don't remember, I think it was with Brian the, uh, on Facebook, we were talking and someone was talking about the masks. And I say, anybody who wants to tell me that masks kill people, all they have to do is show me a list of names, and then I'll believe them. Yeah. One person who's died because they wore a mask. They choked oh, on their mask. want to be introduced to the, to the obituary of that person. I mean, uh, I, I, just, I, just, I just don't understand. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. And it doesn't make any sense to me when I, when I walk down on the street and I see black people who got, most of them have got to know that disproportionately blacks are being affected by it. Okay, and that I do believe. Um, but geez, you know, why tr try and minimize it by wearing a mask? It's young people. And I saw like three black people on the street when I was walking up to the grocery store. Not a but they're young people. Was wearing a mask. And not it's even the same, one was it's that the same way with white. Young white people too are wearing masks. Well, I don't know. I go to get, go to my dentist to get my teeth done down, down around Trump Tower, oddly enough. And um, everybody's wearing a mask. Well, everybody. Midtown and the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side, everybody's wearing a mask. No, if you get too. to Harlem or if you get to the Lower East Side, it's I will different. say, however, and maybe it was because it was cold, but there were less people on the street yesterday. Well, you should have seen it six months ago. <laughs> it was empty. It was well. It was tr totally empty. Yeah, not it a car, nothing. Yeah, but it was windy and cold yesterday. Yeah, it was windy and cold yesterday. I would like to go out there today and see if it's a little, it's a little warmer, is it? It's a little yeah. bit. I, I mean, I was out today. I walked through the Union Square Farmer's Market, and there were plenty of people. They were all wearing masks. I didn't see a single person without a mask. Yeah, Union Square, really? that whole area is good. Jeff? But Where I live, people are crazy. They don't use <clears throat> anything on their face around here. If they go to a store, they have to wear a mask. Well, they can't get in unless they wear a mask. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get, go pick up the mail and all the mail is in one spot, everybody just walk by. They say hello to everybody. They talk. I'm the only well, I mean, I wear a mask the minute I leave the apartment because I take mm -hmm. the elevator and I don't know that somebody isn't going to get in. Right. You know, and I have a very small elevator, so there's no way you're going to have a six feet different distance. And they all wear masks, too, I might add. You know, the people in this building are very, very good. Yeah, but it's mostly older people. I'm saying mostly the people that do not wear masks are young people. Oh, I mean, we've got a bullet to our head, a gun to our head, you yeah. know, with this damn thing. It's not, it's not simple. And look, and look at Charlie. 
Well, uh, he's he's uh, not only older. You're what, sixty? I'm seventy. Seventy. Hey, welcome to. What the is 70s. it about black people? <laughs> the, the black guys that, that they don't age as badly as white people do. Especially the women. He, I, I, you say he was seventy? No. 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 Yeah. Uh, but Asian are like that too. Not only is he in a, in a co uh, as they said on Saturday Night Live the other night, a comorbidity uh, <laughs> <laughs> a group by being 70, okay? But he's also black, so I guess it's two times plus what? I'm two diabetic. Times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably just don't go out, right? I don't. I, I, don't, I don't go anywhere. Yeah. I have a Russian girlfriend who Alex knows, and checking this too. She thinks that seniors should not get shots. And her reasoning is they probably have underlying conditions and therefore why waste the shot on them? <laughs> oh! Well, well if, you, if you get in a car accident in your 30s or you get in a car accident in your 80s and you go to settle in court, a death of an 80-year-old isn't worth as much as a 30-year-old by the actuaries. Yeah. It's they, they, they do say that, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. And I thought Natalia's reasoning, I mean, I could understand it. I just don't agree with her. I don't understand it. I oh. can understand her point of view. You gotta give it to the people most likely to die. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. hold on a second. <laughs> That's what she was saying. It is not a particularly pleasant death, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, what? Well, you're gonna die of something, so you may as well die of this. What, in, in agony, not being able to see your family? Not, die alone? That's cruel. Or not able to breathe. Or not yeah. being able to breathe? I mean, come on. If, if the amount of vaccine was limited. Well, my opinion, your story. friend just changed and was altered greatly. What? My opinion of your friend has changed. <laughs> Would she not have wanted Jack to get the vaccine if you're still with us? Probably. Uh, I'll tell you something. If she was voting, she doesn't vote, she would be a Republican. Just in our conversations, I know, I know it. A lot of the Russians are. Why yeah. doesn't she vote? She's, I mean, she's a citizen now, but I don't think she voted. Or she did, she didn't tell me. Oh. Oh. You know, <laughs> mean she may she didn't, she didn't tell you she probably voted for Trump. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Because well, of course she voted for Trump. Putin's for Trump. <laughs> Well, there's there's this disconnect that somehow liberals in the U.S. are communists in the way that Russia's communist. So if you vote for them, you're voting for what you ran away from. Did you see any of Kelly Loeffler in that debate last night? I it's creepy. She... It's a creepy. A... I mean, Stepford Wife is a kind of cliche, but she's a robot, right? Uh, radical left, Raphael Warnock. Radical left, <laughs> radical left, radical left. And the wealthiest she... woman, wealthiest person in Congress. Right, the wealthiest yeah. person in Congress. Is she? Yes, yeah. her husband owns the stock exchange. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would make her at least vested in uh, having more money, yeah. <laughs> uh, and John Ossoff debated an empty podium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I was him, I'd have walked over and taped a note saying coward to the other. <laughs> well, I love the whole Walked thing. over with a piece of paper with Sharpie. <laughs> Coward. The whole Purdue chicken thing is great. Well, I, what I can't believe are the Republicans. It, God, we're having a political discussion today. Are the Republicans who've been getting up and saying to the other Georgians, don't vote in the senatorial race. It's right. going to be rigged. Yeah, don't be fooled oh, by that. They're voting. Good. I hope yeah. they can it. I agree. Good. Good way. It's okay by me. Yeah. You know. Uh, I mean, it's it's just it's it, it, all of it is insane. We live in insane times. It's crazy. And yeah, they just locked us down uh, last night, ten o'clock in our county. So, no uh, no food open. It's only delivery or takeout, mm -hmm. and no salons, no services like that. Yeah. yeah. What about the massage parlors? Are they still open for the Republicans? Uh, <laughs> the ones down off Story Road, yes, the undercover ones. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for Republicans and football team owners. Yeah. Ooh, yes. <laughs> well, I just you know I what I what I what amazes me are the exceptions they make. Yeah. It's like I'm <clears throat> I'm not a terribly religious person. Well, that's putting it mildly. I'm an atheist. 
right? Uh, well, maybe I'm an agnostic. Maybe I hold out a hope that there is something there. Well, you don't know. Just say, you know, agnostic. I don't know. Yeah, but, <laughs> but basically I'm an atheist. And I'm just tired of them always saying, but we're going to leave the churches open. <laughs> Why? People can pray anywhere they want to. They went to the Supreme Court on that, didn't they? they didn't get and the down. Supreme Court put on their hands and knees at home and pray. Okay, they don't <laughs> need a group of people to pray with. And or sing. Do it, on Zoom. do it on Zoom. You can have services on Zoom. Everyone's having services on Zoom here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't shove the wafer through the screen. Because it's because <laughs> churches are businesses and they need to make money. Yeah. I told, I told you about my new church, right? All those churches are charging people 10%. Mm -hmm. well, with my deal with God, I can get you into heaven at 5%, and I've got a money-back guarantee. If you don't get in, let me know, and I'll give you your money back. <laughs> that's, my new, that's my new business. The churches in Harlem aren't doing that well because people aren't as religious or just old people. So the tourists, what they're doing is they're letting the tourists in. They put them in the balcony, but they don't let them go until the end of the service. No way, no way. No, that was and they pass around the bucket. That was, that's, that was before, but now, see, the, the, the way the churches in Harlem made their big money was on Sundays, it was open to tourists. Tourist bus, tour buses. Tour buses yeah. would stop there so they could go in and you could hear the, hear the service. And you're right. Marjorie, they, they did say, if you come in, if you leave, you can't come back in. Okay. No, you can't leave. You can't leave. Well, I don't think they can keep like, you from leaving. <laughs> it's like a roach motel. But then they would pass around. <laughs> you come in, you don't go out. No, because people would sit around. They would listen to the, you know, the, the, the singing, singing and the, the singing and, and the dancing. And, and once yeah. preaching came on, they'd get up and leave. Yeah. And, you know. But they pass around the buckets but, and they depend on tourism. For their survival now but those people are those people are you know the churches here i'm sure are hurting because they relied on that that yeah. first trade yeah uh and um well, if they pray a little harder their, their church will be safe <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'm yeah. sure um god's will well <laughs> knows about the church we got on the corner here tell them what it used to be shecky well it was roxy who created Radio City Music Hall's first theater. Um, yeah, it was his first theater. It was the, the basically it was the theater. first, it was the first uh, movie palace in America. Yeah. yeah. And if you look at it, it's gorgeous. It really is pretty. Yeah. Um, except for the cross on it. I don't know. Well, they changed, <laughs> they added some things. Well, Shanky and I have always wanted, well, you wanted to go over there and take a look at it because it's, you know, it's historic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but a lot of them, the Los Valencian Queens, that's mm -hmm. a bit of church. And thank God it became a church because they never touched the architecture in, in the interior. Well, because have, you been, have you been to the refurbished King's Theater in Flatbush? Yeah. That's beautiful. That's a glorious theater. But the Los Valencia looks like it did back in the 60s. You know, it goes back to the 30s, but, yeah. 20s. but it looks like it did when I used to see movies there. Oh, yeah. When, when I was a kid in Philadelphia, our big movie theater had a fountain. When you walked in, there was this huge fountain. Everything was carpeted, and you walked up the steps. It was like a second floor. Oh, what a better place to make a, uh, to make a church than an yeah. ex-movie palace. I mean, yeah. these things were grandiose, some of them. And had the architecture and, you know. Yeah, and I mean, it, even like Shecky in his neighborhood, there what one was there in your neighborhood? Well, Los Valencia. The Los Valencia, just in it was one of that, the six um, Lows, whatever they call. Yeah, them, that, but that kind of theater in those days, what they did is they made these theaters grand because yes. people who were poor and could only afford a dime to go see a movie. Well, especially the during theater. the depression, it got yeah. people out of their. It got reality. them in some place that made them feel they were welcome. It was their palace. Yeah, and it, especially during the Depression, Alex, it was very important. Yeah. What's going uh, to happen to movie theaters today? It's the same reason. It, it, by the way, it's the same reason that the Catholic Church built all these big churches, because they would yeah. do it in poor areas, and then all the poor people could come, and this was their house, you know, and they had some place they could get away from their misery for a while and be in some place that was grandiose. Shecky, I'm wondering, were there, were there any grander than Radio City? 
Yes. The Roxy. Okay. And I Radio City was built as a presentation house, not as a theater, movie theater. Okay. What was a presentation house? What's that? A theater where they would dance, sing and dance and so on? Vaudeville. Like the Palace. Like the pa RKO, like the Palace Theater. Live. Where they would do, you know, can we call it a grandiose vaudeville house? Oh. When did it become a movie theater? About six months later when it just died as a presentation house. Now, weren't there, there were bigger ones. What about the Hippodrome? Well, the Hippodrome goes back to like the early 1900s. I, I worked in that building, remember, Alex? Mm -hmm. That was the Hippodrome, yeah. Yeah, it had been the Hippodrome. That had seating for about five or 6,000, the Hippodrome. And, and they, they have actual hippos there? You can go see like a zoo? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, they would actually, they would do water ballet and everything in there. Yeah. Awesome. What's going to happen to today's movie theaters? No one's going. They're going to be cell phone stores. Oh, I was, watching, uh, I was watching a little bit of the movie Jumbo that they made in the... Billy Rose's Jumbo. Billy Rose's Jumbo. Billy Rose, when he did Jumbo at the Hippodrome, I think he had something like a thousand live animals in the show. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And sin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. This I mean, Warner Brothers thing certainly does not bode well for movie theaters. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but all of it, I mean. Oh, movie theaters are dead. They're dead. Don't you think, Shaggy? I don't want to say dead, but, you know, go back to what we talked about yesterday, um, the Mank. So it's playing in like 10 movie houses across America. And where did we watch it? <clears throat> on Netflix. Right. Yeah. No, and billions of people get to watch it on movies. Netflix. Where are you going to watch Wonder Woman on, on Christmas Day? Yeah. HBO Plus or whatever they call that service. Max, yeah. HBO Max is going to have yeah. Wonder Woman. Uh, Warner, Warner announced all the new movies coming out are going to be yeah. in the theater yeah. and on Max at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, what other? Well, there was something else that, that's coming out. Uh, oh, the... Um, the cartoon one, the animation. Oh, uh, Soul, which is Pixar's latest picture, is going to be on Disney Plus. And well, Disney and Warner's have embraced this at this point. Yeah, and it seems as though Soul uh, is maybe I've heard from from um, Michael Snyder for what it's worth is maybe the best <laughs> the best picture that the Pixar has ever turned out. What the yeah. Soul? Yeah. Yeah. But you know it's coming out tomorrow. What? Father Part 3. Not Father right. Part yeah. 3, which I've seen reviews of, and they say that he didn't do much to it. I hear it's very good. Yeah, I heard it was much better. I heard it was much improved. Really? Yeah. Well, much improved over something, something bad. I mean, it's not like, it was so I bad. Had, I saw it in the theater the day it opened, and I'll never Better forget it. When, I saw when, it on Christmas Day. Yeah, Christmas Day. When Sofia Coppola died at the screening I was at, it got like a standing ovation. Yeah, right. Daddy, I did not. <laughs> well, he said he wanted to recut this to make his daughter look better. Yeah, let's say poor Sophie. I mean, it, was, it was supposed to be Winona Ryder, right? But she was pregnant. Yeah, so yeah. Drop out. So he was like a last minute addition because yeah. he had no one else. Did yeah, you order a for check or is it online yet? I have, what? A, I have a coming from Amazon tomorrow. What? What? Godfather. The, Godfather the, Part 3 re-edited. Re it's called Godfather Part 3 uh, Redo the, death, the Death of, uh, of Michael Corleone. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Corleone. The Death of a Franchise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And supposedly he's made some changes in music cues and things like that. You know. I'll watch but it. The, the original was so bad. I mean, oh, awful. <laughs> Well, it was, it was awful, but you saw the potential in it. You know, when I drove into Manhattan to meet on Christmas Day. Oh, you, you wanted to see it as soon as you could. Oh, I was at the first screening on Christmas yeah, Day. Yeah. And, and so now you're going in with great anticipation. How did you walk out? Hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I walked out thinking, really? I mean, that's, uh, you know. I was with two friends, and we're just staring at each other like, huh? Uh, yeah, right. Oh my God! No, it, no, didn't tarnish, it, it didn't tarnish. And killing the you know cardinals and you know. right the old cannoli trick. You know, it, <clears throat> it didn't tarnish the first two at all, though. In the way that at the end of Game of Thrones, now no one watches Game of Thrones anymore, right? Because everyone knows I'm going to put all this time into it, and it's going to suck in the end. 
But you well, know, I mean, no, I think let me get a petition to redo the final season of Game of Thrones. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, that's what they that's what somebody got together. They want to get a petition that they, they had to redo the end of Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, I think that when you have something like Game of Thrones or uh any any number of movies I can think of, that if you've got a series and you get to that last episode that it's never going to live up to what people want. Everyone's yes. got a different concept of how it's supposed to end. I mean, the final good job Seinfeld of breaking is unwatchable. What would you say, Shecky? The final Seinfeld's unwatchable. Yeah, but it's still, but Seinfeld people will still watch always, right? Game of Thrones, people just won't watch anymore. Well, well it's like watching Dallas. You know how the story goes for 12 years. Why do you want to go back and watch season three? Now, what did we see recently yeah. that we said did end good? Breaking Bad ended great. Breaking yeah. Bad yeah. ended good. Yeah. yeah. Dex Dexter ended well. Mm -hmm. That show Six Feet Under ended well. There was something recently that we said that the ending was was pretty damn good. You know. Well, sometimes if the producers don't think they want to revisit it five years later, <laughs> they come up with what they think is a good ending. Yeah. I mean, there aren't they making? Well, maybe it's a prequel to um, The Sopranos. Yeah. Yeah. Let's revisit that. Yeah, well, I, but the thing is that if you don't have um, a pre, it, it, what what is important, I think, is that you have a complete vision from beginning to end. Okay, and I think that's what the, he did with Breaking Bad, and I think that's what he's going to do with Better Call Saul this year. I is this his last I'm year? I'm sure oh, he knows. Oh, no. He knows exactly yeah. how it's going to end. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, and I never watched it, How I Met Your Mother. They filmed footage for the final episode, the first season, to have it ready for the finale. Have, like, they had an idea of how it was going to end. Play out, yeah. Game of Thrones, it wasn't just the final episode, though. It was the second half of the whole last season that, you know, that betrayed everything they had established. Well, first of all, the first three years, we kept saying it was the game of what the fuck is going on because there was so much happening. Couldn't keep track. Well, it was an epic and it had a lot of characters and it had a lot of plot lines. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, I don't know if the ending was bad. It was what it had to be, you know. But I'm trying to think, well, was there something we watched recently and we said, wow, what a good ending. They find, somebody finally did a really good ending for something. And I can't remember what it was now. Well, that's how good it was. Gambit, but that was a short Gambit had a great end. Was it the election? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Alex, Alex, it was probably the Queen's Gambit, wasn't it? The Queen's Gambit. And uh, that's oh, that ended great. They, they yeah. only planned seven episodes, so they knew where they were going right. and not, yeah. right. like, we'll be back next week and should be playing chess in Sheboygan. Right. It's only seven <laughs> episodes and it was a novel. And, right. Uh, so it had a great Whenever episode. you see something that says limited series, in other words, it's only the only one they're going to do, then watch that because right. they've got a complete vision. Okay. You know. They're usually good. And that's, the case, my that's my favorite genre now, right? It's Shecky said to me, watch The Queen's Gambit. I'd seen it around and I didn't know whether I wanted to watch it or whatever. He said, watch it. It's the best series of the year. And you were absolutely right. It made absolutely. it the best of the decade. I mean, it, it was, was really good. It was great. I don't but even like chess and I like that. The season of it, no. Huh? What I, I said, the, you know, the further adventures or whatever the character's name is, no. I don't think there's more to be said. Oh, I think it's not hey, it's But somebody will, some, somebody will say, oh, where's season two? We need more of it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, for anybody that's watching us who hasn't seen The Queen's Gambit. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Or just yeah. take our word for it. it. It You don't have to, you say, oh, it's about. And the actress is wonderful. Yeah. She's, remember. This was a career making turn for her. Remember when Mel Brooks put out History of the World Part Two? Sure. Yeah. Overseas, everyone was searching, where's, where's Mark one? Mark one. <laughs> I, I had people ask me when I was overseas working, you know that Mel Brooks movie? Where, where can I find episode one? I never saw. <laughs> and at the end, he had part three, the previews. And they, they wondered about that, too. Yeah. But, I mean, I, it, it, uh, uh, Queen's Gambit is, is amazing. It's just amazingly good. And you don't have to like chess. And it was a, per it was a perfect chess. series. Yes, it was. Yeah. 
But it was a mini series, so it wasn't quote eight series. No, yes. I, I agree with you about the limited series because you could do more than you could do in a movie, but you don't have to invest the rest of your life in this show. Did you yeah. hear the, the latest thing they're trying to do though? Is they're trying to? There a lot of people are demanding that HBO put on the beginning. That's no, on Netflix. Uh, not uh, uh, Netflix, rather, on the beginning of The Crown. Yeah, but, saying, hey, it's fiction. It's fiction. And I love that they won't do it. No, they, they said Netflix. they won't do it. Yeah, Netflix said, screw you. It's, it's a drama. It's, we build it as a I drama. Would Netflix, I would say, fuck you to everybody. Well, it's coming <laughs> right. from The Crown. You know, it's coming from the Royals one. The, this is fiction. I heard they liked it. Well... I don't know. I, I heard it came from the I heard it came from the Royals as well. So who knows? Yeah, well, I think they're upset that Or Charles. It came from Charles's side. I think yeah. <laughs> they're probably upset yeah. at anything about the yeah. <laughs> Is it good? Should I watch the crowd? The crowd is very it. good. You know, yeah. I mean I this year was kind of what did you think, Jackie? Not as good this year. Mediocre this year. Yeah. Because it was all Diana and you know, I really couldn't care less. There they're doing a reboot of that 80s thing. Remember All Creatures Great and Small? Mm -hmm. It's very good. It's the, the new one is good? Yes, very good. Oh, How have you seen it? Hey, I had my ways. Okay. <laughs> Are you saying it was on in England? It aired in England. It aired in England. Supposed to start here know, in January. Now, how to get something that was aired in England? Alex, ask Jackie. I'll tell you. There's there's ways of doing it. I'll have to check mine and see if I can find it. Yes. Alex. What? What? I will, I just watched the Zappa documentary. Just, 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 I saw the Zappa documentary a couple of weeks ago. It was great. No, it's you're really right. good. You're right. You're right, Marjorie. It's wrong of me to download anything from another country, so you're not getting another episode of Master Chef: The Professionals. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that new the new Frank Zappa documentary. It should have been a mini series. It could have been highly one. recommended. Everybody really should good. see it. If you really? have any Frank Zappa, you should watch that. Yeah. Is that yeah. Netflix? What no. Where is it? It's a uh, pay-per-view, unless you know how. Yeah, I mean, I saw it. Well, what's it called? Ago, is it called the Zappa Zappa movie? It's called Zappa. Zappa? Oh. It was directed by Alex Winter, the Bill and Ted guy. Really? Yep. yep. Yes. He had access to the whole archives of everything Zappa ever did. And yeah, there's movie. tons of footage that have never oh, been seen. So it's a documentary? Yes. Oh, okay. Two-hour documentary. They did Will you find it, Alex? What find do you mean? it out there? Oh, yeah, I'll have to, like, I guess you're going to have to, we're going to have to pay for it, because that's the only way yeah. to get these. That's yeah. correct. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. It's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Did you yeah. think that Dylan sold his entire music archive? This 300 week? million. Not what the you, archive, it's um, just the rights. The, you know, the rights. The, the, sold universe, rights. the sold universal it. music. So he, you can, that will be hearing a lot of Dylan music <laughs> in commercials. <laughs> Wait a minute, he sold the rights? Yes. All of it, all of his publishing. All the publishing. He's 80 years old. He got $300 million. Why should he have to do that this morning? Yeah. yeah, now he can take a vacation. Yeah, you know. Uh, he, yeah. Otherwise, you leave it to the kids and the lawyers fuck it all up, you know? Get the money. Yeah, and then go out and spend it on, I don't know, heroin or something. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> but, but. Uh, uh, well, I mean, it, it's like Lucas selling the Star Wars thing. He just said, I, I don't have anything else that I can do with it or that I want or need to it. say. Yeah, so give me the four billion dollars, which they paid him, and go do with it what you want to. Right. And you know something? If I were him, I'd be very happy with what they did with The Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's original Star Wars repackaged, redone in a, in a very nice a nice version. I mean, I you you look forward to it, right, Rick? Rick, he's frozen. We lose. Him. I'm oh, waiting till the season ends, and then I watch them all. Oh, okay. They're they're all, you day. know, they're all amazingly short. In fact, what were we watching the other day? We watched. Uh, That's only half an hour. Each one was a half what, an but hour. But what was that show? I see. You oh, uh, Fargo. It, Fargo had a. Show episode the final I had a episode. short last episode yeah. but this other show only did 35 you know what it was it was that horrible that horrible series that we didn't like but we watched it anyway yeah but what was it <laughs> i see two old people trying to remember what they watched yesterday 
that. And we spent the whole day watching the entire season. <clears throat> yeah. But what was the, it the kissing booth? <laughs> what was what it? What was it about? I'm trying to remember. I forgot. Who was in it? What was it about? <laughs> well, that's I can't how remember what it was. But I mean, it was. Uh, it was. It uh, was about 35 minutes. <laughs> but each one. Each episode was about 35 minutes. Yeah. And. Uh, oh, I know what it was about. What? It was a chef who was married to the TV person. Yes, that's right. What was it called? The servant. The servant. Servant. That's it. It's, on, it's, yeah. on, it's on Apple TV. Uh. <laughs> Which expires you... this month for me, and I, because I got a free year when I bought a something. Uh, uh, what led you to watch this show? Well, because I had it free. <laughs> so you watch it. Anything that's free. Right. And now I'm still going to pay for Apple TV, and I don't know why, because there's not that much good on it. This we is, watched but, it because it was one of the only things that we woman. could agree on and watch it together. Here's the basic plot, okay? Uh, <laughs> woman, woman, uh, woman's baby. Dies. dies at 13 weeks. So they replace it with a doll because she, so she can still keep thinking the doll is the baby. Well, to the get baby. her over the depression, it was like a, get her over the a temporary thing. And this, this nanny comes, they hire a nanny to take care of the doll, oh. right? And when they, when she comes, all of a sudden the baby's a live baby. Okay. And they're trying to figure out where the live baby came from. You know, thinking maybe she stole it or something like that. We watched uh, how many episodes? Eight episodes of this? Eight. Season? Maybe ten. I can't remember. They were only a half hour each, so you could chew right through them. And I can't say it was any good. <laughs> What's the <laughs> but terrible? But they were blessedly short. That's what yeah. made them so good, you know. They were half an hour. But uh, the last episode of The Mandalorian was only like a half hour, you know. But they, they it's so rich in its vision and so on, that uh, you, you don't blame them for doing that. I mean, they put a lot of work into every episode. And it's the closest thing to the original Star Wars that they've been able to do since. And I, I hear Lucas really likes it too. Let's say I have a baby Yoda. And so have you seen this, Scott, at all? No. Yes, yes, uh, we love it. Yeah, my wife and I, yeah. It's really good. It's yeah. really good. Marjorie didn't like it, did you? Well, I watched one episode. No, you watched we you watched about seven or eight. Did I? Yes. <laughs> um, it's not called watching if she's snoring. I'm lucky she <laughs> I'm lucky she remembers who I am. <laughs> it's getting that way. It is getting that way. Yeah. What the we worst do part is I had a doctor's appointment and she had to do something that required me to get have a prescription filled before I went to her for the procedure. So I went today and she said, did you do such and such? And I said, no, you never said anything to me. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I, I didn't hear this. I, I, I felt terrible only to find out she never called it in. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm going crazy. Yeah. And the doctor never called the prescription in. Yeah, yeah, so. That was my day. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, uh, you know what I'm getting? I'm getting sick of is the inefficiency of people and then blaming it on COVID. You know, you can be efficient and do your work from home, can't you? Brian? <laughs> <laughs> if I have meetings, if I have meetings, it's good. But when I'm trying to settle down and then Adrian comes in and wants to play and, and yeah, it's hard. It's hard. You don't I'm supposed to do something before the show and I got lazy, and then the show comes on. <laughs> well, 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 wait a minute! Don't you have a don't you have a rule in the house like if the doors close, Daddy's working. Don't come. Oh, in. yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> that works real good, doesn't it? Adrian doesn't know that one. No, no, it, it's hard. It's hard to focus, but but 90 percent of my time after I come home at about one o'clock, it's all meetings, so it's it's fine. So, yes. I, so I, yes. I, I, I yeah. have to admit to you, she's one of the most adorable kids I've ever seen. Uh, we love her. Okay, you know, uh, it, the reason why kids are adorable is so you don't eat them. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but well, ho hopefully we can see you before she's like fourteen or something. Oh, know? and she <laughs> once she hits fourteen, you're gonna have all kinds. You're gonna have a problem. <laughs> yeah, she's she's gonna be tall too. 
Yeah, she's not 98. So every time we go to the doctors, they measure her, yeah. you know, and she's, she's taller than 98% of the kids her age. Cause I'm, I'm six, four. So oh, okay. how yeah, tall so is her mom? She's like, well, she's Vietnamese and she's tall for Vietnamese. She's five, seven. So yeah, that is tall. Yeah. Yeah. Is. So all, all the kids are on her family is sprouting out really tall. So, Oh, okay. So she, I, yeah. So she's yeah. going to be a tall one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my my grandson's twelve, and he's almost as tall as me already. Wow! Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I never had any kids. Shecky never had any kids, did you, Shecky? Not that I, I can know of. Kids. Yeah, uh, that, that's always the answer we get. Not that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, you, you. Oh wait a minute! There's a knock on the door. Spit, <laughs> spit in a cup and mail it in. You'll find out. Charlie, yeah, exactly. do you have any kids? Yeah, I got three kids. Yeah, three kids. Well, uh, Ronnie had uh, had a kid that she gave up for adoption because it was, she wasn't married at the time. And um, late in life, like just the last two years, the kid shows up, <laughs> you know, and she found him through like, I think, Ancestry.com. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, we, found, we found a distant cousin that way who didn't know who his real father was. And it was, he's, he's 58 years old. His dad, my crazy uncle, was born in 1892 and was his father. Wow. He, he was in his 60s when he impregnated this 19-year-old. <laughs> and wow. this guy grew up thinking he was, he was a Sicilian because of the father he thought he had. Moved to Italy, <laughs> learned to speak Italian, came back to the States later in life to find out he's not Italian. <laughs> Well, I it's a long story, but that's the, I, I, that's the short version of it. I, I allegedly had a kid when I was, uh, I think I was 18 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and she gave it up for adoption. And in those days, I couldn't even find out, you know, who the kid was or where he was. I found out it was a he, but only because I could read upside down. Because I was in the doctor's office and he had the paperwork in front of him. And I could, I was reading it upside down and it said, boy, male, whatever. And uh, uh, for didn't you, you say you thought it was Howard Stern? Well, yeah, I, I it, you know, it, it could conceivably be Howard Stern, yeah, not Baba Booey, no, uh, Howard, yeah, Howard, uh, Howard's too old to be uh, for you to be 18, but but I, I'm 18 years younger than you, Alex, so I could be your son. You, you could be my son, I could be. Well, let's just pretend from here on in like you are. Oh, that'd be awesome. When he goes, you can have his Trumpy bear. <laughs> I, I just want some of his DVDs in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> you can have them now. You know, I never, <laughs> I never watch them. Some Shecky, of them are mine. Wait a minute, let me ask Shecky. Shecky, how many DVDs do you own? Just a guesstimate. Uh, way too many. No, no. Would I be overestimating by saying ten thousand? Mm, yes. How about five thousand? Yes. I'd be overestimating. You'd be overestimating. Oh, okay. Because yeah, it's four thousand. I've got at least like now. Two. I've got twenty thousand movies, whether on VHS, Laserdisc, DVD, or digital, but they're not all DVDs. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I think I have about two thousand DVDs. Hey, some of those are mine. <laughs> Just a few of them, because I had you throw no. them away. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and I have some of these. These aren't all of them. I have some of them in boxes here that I've already committed to uh, to video, to files, video files. Um, but then I got tired of copying them. So, you know, that was it. You know, but in the last week, I think I told you, the George Pal Puppetoon disc set came out. Some fellow privately did the uncensored Warner Brothers 11. The Bugs Bunny set came today. You know, so... Yeah, but you're you're the only person left I know that's buying DVDs. Most people are buying these things. Yeah, like, but these are one. Can I call it one-offs? This is not buying Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. but most of these are you can buy in most DVDs today. You can buy as digital files, and it's easier probably to have them as digital files. Not these, not these. Oh, okay. All right. And like the Bugs Bunny set comes with digital files. You know, the code to get them digitally. Okay. All right. Yeah. The big problem with that set is you had to buy it with a Funko 
Bugs Bunny doll. <laughs> <laughs> really? Which I plan on now keeping mint in box for about five years, and I'm going to give it to a friend of ours to sell at his little pop-up store on <laughs> Amazon or whatever. You mean, you mean, you mean Anthony? Yes. <laughs> Because by then it's going to be a very rare collectible. I get a feeling. In five years, listen. When his what? mother, when his mother goes, he's going to stuff her, put her in a plastic box, <laughs> and then wait about five years and sell her as mint. <laughs> Keep getting money off of her. Right. Taking care of her. Gee, he, gets, he gets paid to do it. Yeah. He, Shecky and I said. Maybe he's got more money than either of us combined. Very possible. <laughs> just from selling these goddamn comic books. He goes out, he buys a hundred. He buys like 50 comic books, like Archie meets Donald Trump. I think it's 150 bucks for each one. Then he holds on to them for a while. Yeah, yeah, no. He, buy, he bought, you know, like, there wasn't an Archie meets Donald Trump, but it'll be some comic book with Donald Trump on the cover from 10 years ago. And yeah. he'll buy 50 of them, put them, you know, in plastic or whatever, and, and people buy him. He and he grades comic books, and he he, he literally, I think, has made a fortune off of this. He gets like one hundred and twenty-five bucks per or something. Didn't wow. he sell something recently for like four hundred a copy or something? And he I had, don't know. But, you know, but of yeah, them? I mean, it's very good dollars for them. But they're can I call it specialized things? It's not just super. Well, he doesn't men. sell them all. He doesn't sell them all at once because if he sold no, them all he once, it would be, them out. if he if he sold all hundred at once, the price would go down on them. Right, he parcels them out. Wow. You know, like I think he bought that comic book Spawn probably twenty five years ago and bought like a hundred of them. And this is the original Spawn. Yeah, so he has like a hundred copies of Spawn number one, and then slowly parcels them out wow what did they sell for 150 200 per wow and how much did he buy them for he gets them at 40 percent off so probably he paid a buck buck and a half maybe wow <laughs> <laughs> think of the profit well, okay thank so you today he might be listening to us because he often does that without coming on he was having christmas lights put up at the house <laughs> And they're all in mint condition. <laughs> well, his mother hired her hairdresser because their shop is closed, and he and his partner came to put them up. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's sweet, isn't it? No, I thought very sweet. You know. Oh. Tony made them lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he cooks a lot. Yeah, yes. he posts a lot of food on Facebook. Well, he, you know? he, yeah. got, he got the job of taking care of his mother, and he makes like, I don't know, well, what do you make? Probably make a very good salary doing that in medical benefits and retirement medical benefits, benefits exactly. Yeah. And the city pays them. Right? Yeah, the city pays them to do it. So, m mom has a life insurance policy. Is basically what it is. Because he's so going to sure she makes every insurance? medical appointment. <laughs> what? You know, and as you know, the hat factory—it's pretty much closed. Might yeah. never reopen. You know, so and he's in great shape. Now, let me ask Scott something quickly, because he lives in Plano, Texas. And so I want to ask him, how are things going at the Snapple factory? I have no idea. Yeah, but yeah. that is the home of Snapple, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was Brooklyn. Well, the corporate headquarters. I mean, I don't, I don't think they make Snapple here. I know. They, they make it all over the country. The corporate headquarters of Plano, Texas. I think it started in Brooklyn. But then it moved to Plano, Texas. Why? I have no idea. It was, it was purchased years ago as, to, to get it off. Yeah. Under, under, I think it's Coca-Cola owns it. Or no, no, Dr. Pepper Snapple is the same Pepper, company. Yeah. Dr. Pepper Snapple. Well, Dr. Pepper that, Snapple? That, they they bottle it all over the country. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, a, it's a, a pretty, uh, pretty uh, terrific that he lives in Plano, Texas. Oh, look who's here at the end of the show. Hey. 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 hey, hey, here she is. Here she is. Uh, uh, hi, they're all talking she about you. Say hi. Wait a oh, minute. She's so oh. shy. She's being not... shy today. Shy? Hey, yeah. you're never shy. She'll be shy for five minutes and then she's yelling and screaming and dancing all over the place. Hey, Adrian, look, look, Alex, look, Alex, look, Alex. Hi. <laughs> oh, well. 
<laughs> well, she came by just in time because we've run out of time here. Well, I love these Monday shows. I and I think it looks like you guys do too. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just it's just uh, you know the only, one, the only one of my shows Shecky will put up with. You know. She's great. She's adorable. And, and Marjorie. Thank well, you, we'll Benedict. come by when it's when COVID's over. We're going to go to New York for vacation. So. Oh, good. Okay, let us know. Most, yeah. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, yes, Andrew, thank you. Thank you, Shecky. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Adrian. Adrian? Adrian. 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 <laughs> she can hear me, right? Yeah, she can hear you. Adrian, make me a funny face. Make a funny face. Make a funny face. face. Wait, funny make face. a funny face. Make a funny make face. face. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. That's oh, a really funny face, not your face. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Scott, and thank you, uh, Charlie. We appreciate it. That, you uh, forgot me. I just you. Know Marjorie me. Miller. Marjorie you Miller. Forget me. She, you, nice. think she, you know she was married to me if she used the name Bennett, but she doesn't. <laughs> oh. You know. Anyway, hey, Adrian. everybody, wave goodbye to our audience. I'll wave it's goodbye as well. Thank you all Bye. for having Bye. joined us Bye. on our uh, little Monday <laughs> pop up. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.